Yeah, to answer your question, like the mo- motivating yourself on the road is easy when you're on tour with, with someone like Palasi or, um, you know, Crooked Colours or something because we're, you, you kind of feed off each other if, if one man's a bit down and someone will be up. But um, I won't lie in saying that the last, you know, three months, there's, it's been a roller coaster. Today on the podcast, we have a very special friend of mine, Tom Derricks. I don't know if you know about Tom, but what can't this man fucking do? He's ex-AFL star, he's the ambassador and male model of David Jones, and he's the ambassador of Are You OK? He is legitimately also one of the most humble humans. He's in a duo band called KX, which is actually the band that I manage, and now as a solo artist, Tom Derricks. The guy is like gifted like so gifted in terms of talent and not to mention his genes are just fucking amazing for all the girls out there you all know about tom derricks oh my god <laughs> you with tom my like Hello. absolute everything i love hey, you Lee. how are you <laughs> i'm good thank i'm good i'm really good i'm just sort of um second day out of out of lockdown so yeah i mean it's it's been a a long 108 days or something so but it's also yeah. felt like it's gone pretty quick so like i mean lockdown we popped out of lockdown on the monday so nothing's really changed yet but i'm i'm definitely i you feel a bit more love free lockdown too. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I am a lockdown person i was like really does it have to finish but yeah. i i do feel for, like driving around um monday morning on my way to work and seeing all the barbers and and, and drunk people walking around the streets because they'd been out since midnight that night. It was it was nice to see. Um, and yeah, yeah like, you, like you mentioned, I am a bit of a home homebody, so uh, my life hasn't really changed. Um, but yeah, it's good down here. It's just like been crazy average weather. So we popped out and it just started raining. So that's classic yeah. Sydney. It's, yeah, it's shit up here at the moment too, so don't worry, it's not just you. <laughs> it's but yeah, I'm good, I'm good. It's yeah. good to see you. I haven't spoken to you for a while. I know. It's been a while. It's been a while. Oh, actually, it'd be cool if we could, maybe not that long ago. It'd be cooler if we could hang out in person and do this because it would um, maybe have a beer. But we can do that. Well, we do that I will be down day. there very soon. I'm coming down in like six weeks, so we will be having a beer. I'll be in Sydney for a, gu- a good few days before heading to Melbourne. So um, we'll Beautiful. be doing this for sure. 100%. 100%. That'd be fun. Yeah. How's it been and going so, for you up there? Um, it's been going good. I mean, it feels like summer up here. Um, so no, you can't really complain. I live in paradise. Like yeah, you've seen it, you've come up yeah, here and seen great. my house. It's, it's um, I should, shouldn't have left. Yeah, I know you should have, you should have actually just stayed here because the minute that you left, I think that's when you went into lockdown. Actually, I was in WA and I, like, we had a couple of cases and then I booked the, my first flight, like straight away booked the flight back to Perth for um, family reasons and then I stupidly flew back to Sydney but I just assumed it was going to be one of those snap lockdowns for a week and then we'd pop out but um, yeah and the beauty is true that you've been the beauty is true that you've been um you've been able to work I guess like because you've been essential so you're like working I've been working. I've been like, I probably wouldn't have finished this music project if I wasn't on my own as well. Um, I'd just be in, yeah. in WA fishing and surfing and hanging out with my family. So um, the silver yeah. lining is, is that exactly like I've finished a lot, a lot of music and I've still been able to work. Um, everything's kind of slowed down, which is how I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> let's do a little, um, let's do a little icebreaker. I mean, because I know you so well, let's do it all. Let's do all. I want to know your last text, your last photo or video, and your last yeah. song that you played on Spotify. Okay. Te- oh, text. <laughs> uh, Matt Baker oh, yeah? and, and Amal. Thoughts on Lang who hand-pulled beef noodles in Kensington tonight. And then Matt said, 
very keen for some Asian delicacies. And I go, I'm about to do a podcast. I'm out of action. And then, <laughs> that does sound so good though. My last <laughs> photo is, <laughs> oh my God. What is that? Show me. Oh, it's, I don't know. If, it's this guy off, off Instagram. <laughs> His name's Francis. He's this like, he lo- he's, he's a train lover. He's a but what lover? He loves trains. It's, I don't know if you've seen him, but he's my favourite nah. guy in the world. But my, sec- my second one is my brother and his new fiance. Cute. Telenia. Cute. So they, got in- they got engaged the other day. So. Oh, did they? Yeah. Congratulations to Tom's brother. Yeah, so that they, he did that in, um, in Lake Como in, in Italy. Because they had to get out of WA. So, and then my, what was that on? Spotify? Last song, yeah, some on Spotify. Um, hang on. Oh, Sam Fender off his new record, Getting oh, yeah, Started. Yeah. It's such a tune. It's so good. Okay. The whole record's unreal. But I need to listen to one. this whole record. I think I've only listened to like one or two songs off it. Yeah, that it's so good. Talk to me. So your new music project that you're doing, Tom Derek's yeah. solo. Talk to me. Where are you sitting at with that? Like, when's the first song dropping? Obviously, I've heard I've heard the EP. I've seen the link of Secret Tracks, so I know how good it is, and I know what what to expect. But I guess yeah. for other people, what what is it? Yeah, well, it started as a um, as a uni project. I'm studying composition at, at uni, and um, it would have been kind of easy for me to to use Kax as my project and all and all my um, songs that I had to write and film stuff that I had to do. And but I, th- I thought I'd challenge myself and, and make something completely different, which was like going back to my roots of like indie rock and folk rock. Um, so I started this project and then I wrote about six or seven songs and just felt like unbelievable satisfaction out of it. So mm. it became a thing and I like sent it to people like yourself and family. And that was like the sole reason of doing it was to just crank it in my own car and let mm. my friends and family crank it in their cars. So. But then, yeah, then people were like, this is actually pretty good. And I was like, maybe I should release it. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm self-releasing my first single this Friday. So oh, this whenever, Friday. This, whenever this podcast comes out, it It'll would be been, out. Yeah, so f- the 15th. So, yeah, it's kind of weird. How exciting. Like, Which song are you going with is the first it, one? The song's called Horror Show. Oh, yeah, sick. You and it's sort that. of about um, the leadership or, like, lack of – leadership in in the last sort of three months and but also it's about like um all the all the love stories that have maybe come out of this this um the last three or four months so it's yeah. a it's a it's a cool little song so i'm super pumped and i hope you guys all like it oh i mean anything that tom Derek does i think everyone loves <laughs> Don't know about that. Got a little, you got a little that. fan base let's be real afl star yeah. gone to the david jones model to now Tom Derrick's musician. Well, it's funny. It's funny that like so. Someone, um, the the group that are helping me release it, they wrote me, me a bio for the for my Spotify and Apple Music. And they said they sent it to me to edit, and it was like AFL superstar ten. And I was like, no, nah, let's cut that. I was not a superstar. <laughs> I played like fourteen or fifteen games across about eight years. So. Well, we can we can keep the superstar, and if you really think it's going to help, but I don't think, I don't think it's true. I don't think it's true. But um, so I edited that out, and um, yeah, I liked the the parts of it where it's about you know just me as me and what I'm about now. Like I'm a carpenter, mm-hmm. and I'm a family man, and um, and that's what the project is is built off. I think so. I kind of yeah. chopped out all that. All those, all those lies, I guess. Um, yeah. They're not really lies, but it's not who you are, so I totally get it. Yeah, You're for sure. the most humble, grounded, like soulful man I've ever met. Thank you. Thank you. That could have, that, you should have written my bio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, so. You should have asked me. I would have done it. 
Yeah, it would have been too biased. It would have been too one sided. Yeah, no, so, true. Um, so yeah, that's yeah, I'm really excited. It's been a pretty busy week with like I forgot about all the press stuff that comes and comes with a with a single release. So, which is a good thing too. But usually I've got Palasi by my side, sort of helping me and helping yeah. each other. So it's been a learning experience for me. I've tried to do most of it myself in terms of um the release and. Um, putting like a website together and content and stuff. So it's yeah. been fun, challenging, but fun. And, and yeah, I'm, I haven't really, I'm pretty nervous too. I haven't thought about because it, it was never meant to see the light of day, this project that it's going to, and it's it's going to become a bit of a thing now. So I'm putting together a band and um, we'll hopefully start doing shows this year. So yeah, that'd I can't be wait. I'm, yeah. I'm going to help wherever I can. Obviously. That'd be good. That'd be good. Um, yeah, I love this little project that you've got going on. And for anyone that's listening, Palasi's the other um, the other person in KX, which is the band okay. that yeah. I manage. And I love the dance duo KX, my two little Perth boys. But, um, yeah, Tom's on a new, yeah, new it's okay. chat, which it's, I'm it's so still, excited. Yeah. It's still going. It's still, it's still going. We just – we had the, um, the 5K rule, so we couldn't really see each other. Um, yeah. And I was not going to – um allocate him as my as my single single buddy so we we stopped kind of forcing it a bit and then this yeah. project sprung to life and he's working on another project called sumo candy which is actually really good too to, not oh, too fun. but it's it's really cool it's um i don't even know how to describe it it's like it's like emo hip-hop rock or something it's kind of, you know it's, what it's palasi I'm, in a nutshell palasi like, to a t the genre, the genre should yeah. be called palasi it's, it's, <laughs> it's really cool it's really cool so oh, yeah that's so good check so out your show notes too to check out sumo candy and yeah Tom Derrick, totally the, the, um, um, the byproduct of kx so yeah, I love that. I thought he was doing something like something Sushimi. Do you remember when he was doing like this? He did the song Sushimi with Big Jocks or whatever. What happened to Big yeah, Jocks? He did Crocodile Sushimi as Big Jocks. Oh, Crocodile so Sushimi. Yeah. That was so. That was his little outlet, I guess, because KX was a thing. I guess KX was built off our friendship, and then it was hard to kind of express ourselves individually in, in a duo. So he started yeah. doing. Um, Big Jocks, which is what yeah. my brother and I nicknamed him as oh. as kids because we're childhood, not childhood friends. They're pretty much childhood friends. He, his mum used to buy him these massive jocks. So he got this nickname, <laughs> uh, Big Jocks, and he um, took it and ran with it and started a little, a little um, project, Side Hustle, which was really yeah. cool too. But this one's more, um, I think he's, this one's a bit more serious. It's really good. He's working with a good friend of ours, so Miles Towers, in Melbourne, and and they're doing oh, yeah, a lot cool. of TikTok directed music. It's brilliant. Yeah. Love that. I guess, like, for your like, let's go into your boss moment. I guess the boss moment might even need to be uh, with KX because you're not on the road yet. Unless there is like the boss moment with. Tom Derrick's that like was the penny drop where you just felt like, holy fuck, this is actually a thing. Cause you did say that it was a thing. I even thought it was a thing. I think that this is like going to blow up a little bit more than obviously KX. Um, just because it's something that's kind of like, there's not that many, I don't know. There's, I, I feel like Australians love that style of music and there's not that much out there anymore in terms of Australian artists doing those kind of, that kind of music. So I definitely see – I can see Tom Derricks on fucking every festival. Like I that, can feel be it nice. in my yeah. bones. That would be cool. That's why i got to get this show organised because um, the people that are sort of helping me um, get it out and spreading the word are like, what is your show going to look like? So I'm, I've already got a bass player. I'm looking for – Oh, epic. I've got a, a drummer and I want to get just a few – one other guitarist, maybe a – Yeah female vocalist to do it i want to actually write a song with it with a with, i've never done a duet girl or boy so i think oh apart from with palazzi but um, <laughs> that doesn't count um so yeah the, my, that. I, so i haven't had any boss moments as tom derricks and i even if i did i wouldn't i'm not the type of guy that would tell anyone either i'd play it down but we had a couple of funny ones with Derek, i think we'd um we <laughs> 
We had one. Oh, it was it was an indirect boss moment where we flew to Japan for Corona Sunset Festival, and we were picked yeah. up at the um at the airport, and they thought we were cut copy. So we <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we had yeah, they showed us around Japan and there was all the bells and whistles, and we were just like, "What's going on?" and and then we finally looked on the back on the side of this of this van that we were in that said cut copy. And we're like, that makes a lot of sense now. I don't think KX would get it picked up at the airport. So that was a boss moment, we thought. Um we've had a few funny ones in when we toured in America as well and and um played a few shows in LA. But Tom Derricks as an individual solo artist hasn't had any boss moments yet. The boss well, moment would I be guess just mate, the, the- the boss yeah. moment could be when you actually sent the link around to everyone and we all were like, this is actually a thing. That could be the moment for now. Yeah, I think the boss moment will just be when it comes out on Friday or on the 15th. Yeah. So I'll be super proud. and um, Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm, I can't wait either. It's so exciting. And then I guess, like, have you got a moment that you found that has been, you know, either something terrible has happened and you've learned from it and it's been super beneficial or it's just been like a full on, this was fucked, this is like the most embarrassing moment of my life that you can recall oh. while in music? Um, I mean, we've had a lot of, yeah, I think I've built a lot of resilience in my in my football days. I think I had some shocker, shockers in my football days. One, I won't go into it, but I dropped a mark once and um, we essentially lost us the game. And um, that perspective was to change my outlook on, on a lot of things in life because it was hard at the time and I was getting, you know, death threats from all these Richmond fans. And and then a lot of the stuff with music with like, yeah, our, our gear hasn't worked sometimes and, you know, we've been stuck on stage when something's stuffed up and, um, and it is embarrassing, but you know you learn you learn resilience, and and we came into it a little bit older than than most as well, so we kind of laughed it off a bit. Although <laughs> it is embarrassing some of the stuff that's happened, but um, the most embarrassing thing was probably on the footy field when I dropped that mark, and then since then no, <laughs> nothing's been embarrassing. And, yeah, well, fuck, yeah. I can't. Yeah, AFL fans are just so gnarly. Like, oh, who gnarly, would even send a death threat? Oh, it's some peanut on a on the internet that will never say it to your face. But yeah, you know the mu- the music industry is lovely compared to football, so there's never been anything like that. Um, embarrassing stuff, yeah, but m- more so funny, more so funny yeah. because we're doing it together. I think when you when you're embarrassed around Palacio and when he's embarrassed around me, it's it's more of a it's more of a laugh. I think so. Yeah, for sure. Um, you guys have the highest of energy. But yeah, heaps of shockers, heaps of shockers. <laughs> but you guys would just laugh it off, I feel like. Yeah, we're pretty yeah, good at that. You guys are, at that. Yeah. And you are easily probably the most, oh, fuck. I, I put you on such a pedestal, Tom. Like, honestly, I've never, before you, I honestly don't know. Like, my cup was not as full. Like, before you... I don't know, like, what was I doing? Everyone needs a Tom Derricks in their life because yeah. you have just been, like, I can come to you with anything and know that you will literally just have my back. You're so easy to talk to. You're that much, you're that fucking humble. Like, you're so selfless. Like, there's just something <laughs> about you. Like, I can't speak more highly of you. Um, so, I, I come guess, on like. more often. It's a bit of a. <laughs> With a confidence no, boost for not me. everyone. Not everyone's going to get this kind of <laughs> this kind of compliments. Um, with like you're very vocal about mental health. Obviously, you're uh, are you okay, ambassador? Like, what would be? I mean, you haven't been on the road in a while. Obviously, fucking COVID. But what would you say is how? Like, have you got a tip of what you do to stay balanced when you're on the road or? Um, you know, if like, what do you do for your mental health? Like, fuck, you've just spent 108 days in lockdown. Or, yeah. You know, no, it's a, what it's would a, you suggest? It's a, because I mean, question. it's really hard to keep, it's really hard to keep your routine or to keep morale, to keep excited, obviously, when you're on the road. So, yeah, if there's anything that you kind of do. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, oh, thank you. So, yeah, to, I am an IOK ambassador and, and 
that's probably the, my proudest thing that I do. And um, I love being vocal about it, as hard as it is sometimes. But I just see the impact it has when it comes from from men like myself. And um, yeah, to answer your question, like the mo- motivating yourself on the road is easy when you're on tour with with someone like Palasi or um, you know Crooked mm. Colors or something because we're, you, you kind of feed off each other. If, if one man's a bit down and someone will be up, but um, I won't lie in, in saying that the last, you know, three months, there's, it's been a roller coaster of, you know, motivation because you, um, at the start, I was super motivated and got so much work done and wrote so much music. And then the last month I've been so lazy, but mm. I've kind of just let, let that be, um, you know, just accept the fact that I'm going to watch Squid Game for two days straight I, and not I'm beat not myself up about it. Is it good? <laughs> good. It is good. It, it's really good. Um, instead of, you know, because I'm always like, I, I want to read, I want to read books instead of watch TV or I want to write music yeah. instead of um, binge watch something. And But then it's, yeah, you can only push yourself to a limit when you're in the, I live on my own. So it's kind of, you, I don't think we were designed yeah. to be, locked up like this so you got to be kind to yourself and that's one one of my biggest tips is is to do exactly that be kind to yourself and i do a lot personally do a lot of um meditation and um gratitude journaling and um i can't i I swear by that stuff and uh, i get pretty woo woo with some of my um, breathing exercises and um tapping stuff i don't know if any of the listeners out there know um eft tapping is but it's been something i've really bought into the last month and it's kind of given me a bit of motivation and um, a bit of clarity and I do some Vedic yeah. meditation stuff as well, which gives me a lot of clarity and, and slows my busy That's mind down. That's sent me on Instagram, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. If we're allowed to plug on here, Matt Ringrose, Bondi Meditation Centre, I think. I did a course with him about five years ago and it was, it was pretty life-changing for me. Um, yeah. I just learned to kind of pull back and and um, slow my busy mind down because I might sound quite slow and um, <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh, but my mind is spinning. So like it's good to bring it back to um, yeah. you know my my values and my mantras and my philosophies and and it's helped me a lot yeah. with getting through this period and um, it's helped me a lot with being creative and and maintaining you know, the relationships with family who are, you know, locked, um, essentially locked <laughs> locked in WA. Yeah, you um, can't go there. Yeah, well, I'm locked out of there. So, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been bloody hard, but it's, you know, mum calls me all the time and she's so worried. I'm like, mum, this is, this is the lifestyle that I love. And I, I know I'm looking forward to going back on the road and touring and doing shows, but um, at the root of it all, You're this is... Homebody. Yeah, I'm I'm a massive homebody, so mm. a bit of balance would be nice. Touring and then duck home to Dunsborough and WA for a month and um, recoup. That would be nice. Yeah. That's what I need. I I can just tell when when I need a bit of fresh air in in Dunsborough, and and that is about now. Yeah. So yeah. McGowan, I know you're a big fan of. Bianca Bolton and, and our new podcast. I, Open the borders, <laughs> mate. I know. I know. I feel you. I um. I feel the same. I mean, I feel the other way around up here. Like I feel like I'm locked in Queensland, um, mm. which is fucking annoying because I just want to get down to Sydney, see you guys, see like my second my second family, like of everyone. You know, I lived down there for like eleven years, so like yeah, obviously everyone I mean, down there, and then everyone's in Melbourne. Like all my family's in Melbourne. I'm damned anywhere I go. So I feel you. It's fucked. No, you're right. You got to think like that. You got to think that you know my my family in, in WA who are kind of trapped there. They they're going through some stuff too. You know, my brother, for instance, his girlfriend is Singaporean, and she was um, unable yeah. to get into WA, so he's had to essentially leave to see her and now they're in you know um, in europe together so yeah you got uh, i feel for people everywhere around australia yeah. not just people
people that are locked out of their home states, but everywhere because there is some restrictions on on everyone. So the yeah, light is at the end of the tunnel, and then we can and we can see it. Yeah, it's good. Mm, yeah, um, and so I guess like behind the scenes, like if you weren't, I think I already know what this answer will be, but if you weren't <sighs> performing. And if you weren't making music, if you weren't doing anything in music, like what would you, I guess, like what would you be doing? Yeah, well, you probably you probably know the answer, but because um, music's just a part of my life. Like I'm a carpenter, so um, yeah. I don't really want to be on the you... tools forever, but I do love building things and I love, I make a bit of furniture and I, um, there's a few chairs around the house here, but I'm not going to show you guys. But I make furniture. I make, oh, yeah, and the I, Japanese um, chairs. Yeah, there's a few Japanese chairs around here. I do a bit. So I'm a carpenter and joiner by trade. So, I mean, if music dropped off the face of the earth tomorrow, I'd just probably go back to guns and, and build things. So, and I'd be content with that. Like, I, st I still do it now. Um, even though there's times when I think I don't have to be doing this, but I, I do like um an honest day's work you know? um so i'd probably be doing some building stuff i don't necessarily like um working for people so i'd probably go out on my yeah. own and and you'd have to do a, something on your own yeah start a furniture line or um just do fit outs and make things for people as long as i'm mm. creating I'm, I'm happy yeah do you reckon? Do you have a weird hobby at all? A weird hobby. Do you reckon um, furniture is? Because I feel like most people wouldn't look at you going, "Oh, this guy makes furniture." You also were doing something with tiles, remember? And oh ceramics. yeah, yeah, weird hobby. I, I've been making um, pottery a little bit lately with porch ceramics. Um, yeah. He's like um, local guy Sammy Smith from Porch and Parlor, and a good friend of mine, Ryan, who's a um, I miss seeing from, Sammy every day. From his American fella, and he's um, he's just so good to be around that I kind of got sucked into the the hobby of making stuff out of clay. And I'm not saying I'm good at it, but it, it is it's quite therapeutic. therapeutic. And, yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, the hobby. He, yeah, he kind of like, didn't something did something happen to him? He hurt his shoulder or something, and that's why he had to go in there and kind of help him. Yeah, he, yeah. He dislocated his shoulder yeah. and, and cracked a bone, so I started helping him make plates. And um, the the sales really went down when I jumped in and helped out. But you know the <laughs> morale was higher, higher than ever. So of course, yeah. So no hobbies. I've, I've been cooking a little bit. Um, again, not great things, but I just kind of make stuff up. And so <laughs> sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's really, really shit. So <laughs> I need to write write it down when I'm making stuff because I'm not like a um, method sort of guy. I'm just a chuck chuck it all in and see what happens type of guy. So and that yeah. probably probably um, rings true with my music when you guys hear it. There's a lot. There's some. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a there's a fair bit going on. So I've had to strip it back a bit. But cooking, um, yeah. making making stuff and. Yeah, I, I read a lot. I've been reading a lot lately and, and I've been writing a lot. So I just write, sort of um, write down what I'm thinking and try to turn that into music sometimes. So. Mm. And study, which has been full on this year. Jeez. But it was good. It's kind of pushed you into this new project, which solo yeah, project, exactly. which is going to yeah, no, be exactly. epic for you. So, yeah. Exactly, though. Exactly. Um, and I guess, like, do you have, like, like a, your greatest of greatest story when you were on the road? Like what's your best tour story? Do you have one that comes to mind? Because um, I feel like you've had some good times with Crooked Colours Boys. Yeah, we've had some really good times. Um, we, we, yeah, we've been lucky enough to go to the States a couple of times. Um, we went, we played, we supported Naughty by Nature in New York, which is pretty funny. Um because they all rocked up uh, with walking sticks. And I, I just assumed that was, they were just old and <laughs> <laughs> just old and needed them. But I went, like, long story short, I tried to help one of them walk down 
the stairs because I thought he was like injured or unable to walk down on his own and he, and he kind of pushed me off and and I soon found out that the walking stick is a is a bit of a gangster thing so um tail between um, the legs walk back and so- sat, sat on my own and, and cried so um we've also had Drake <laughs> Dra- <laughs> Drake we were DJing at a bar in in LA and and then we weren't playing enough hip-hop we were playing just disco kayak stuff and Drake kicked yeah. us off the decks which was pretty funny well, he actually bought the bar and demanded that we get off the decks. So <laughs> <laughs> that was like, yeah, that was kind of like a boss moment turned shocker. Like we were like yeah. DJing, DJing to this, like ASAP Rocky was there and Drake and all his gang. And everyone and, and anyone was there that you can, you can name. And we were like, how good is this? This is like just when we released our first couple of singles and we were in LA and then, Next thing, one of Jake, Drake's um, crew walk up and he, they're like, can you play some hip-hop? We're like, yeah, we'll play it with whatever we've got on our USB. We'll play a couple of songs and ran out of hip-hop pretty quickly. And then then it was like, can you guys play some Drake? Otherwise, you, you're you out. And <laughs> we looked at each other. We're like, looks, out, looks like we're out then. So we, um, we essentially got kicked off, took our USBs with us, and then Drake got up there and plugged his phone in and put that passion fruit song on and that album on. So that was that was boss to shocker that, um, dot com. That, that to me is like is that not weird that he wants to play his own music? Like I could never imagine and like plugging it in on a phone. I don't know. I could never imagine someone doing that. Unless you were doing a DJ set and you're playing your own tunes. Like he's a rapper. Like I don't know. Or well, like I think it's like, like when you someone like Drake and it's like KX Drake up up there with the with the greats. So it's like that <laughs> yeah. was like it was, it was quite it was, we thought it was quite disrespectful that someone like him would kick someone like us off. So, um, but yeah, the fact that he put his own music on was pretty funny. And they had they Sounds had a like bit of a Kanye rough time. Would do. Yeah, it was a Kanye move. Um, yeah, <laughs> but you know, it was was not it was it was um, more embarrassing for him than us, I think, because now, you know. I know Drake's probably listening as well. He, he, I'm t- talking yeah. shit about Drake, so. <laughs> so I win Shout that out one. to Drake. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Fuck, that's so funny. And so with the new song that's obviously coming out this Friday, can't believe it, this Friday. So yeah. are you doing, because I know that there's a few on that EP. Are you going to release like, one every like say six weeks until they're all released or are you going to release like two and then the whole EP? Like, is there a bit of a plan behind? There's a plan. Uh, I think that there's a, yeah, loose. I think I'm going to go with singles for the start and uh, until something kind mm-hmm. of pricks the ears of, of the people that sort of book shows and, and festivals. But, you know, the at the core of it, I'm, I'm doing it for, for me. So I'm going to keep releasing music. Um Yeah. But the the body of work that I've written so far will will come under the umbrella of probably an album or an EP. So, um, yeah. so you'll hear them all in in the next sort of six months. I'd say I might release three or four singles and then a, the whole body of work together um, mm-hmm. early next year. So yeah, maybe an album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck why yeah. not? Do it. Why the I mean, fuck that- not? Yeah, I mean, no one's got the attention span to listen to an album, but I don't really care. That's fine. I'll listen to it. I don't know. Maddie, you know Matt Bartlam um, yeah. from Golding and producer. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Maddie sent me, he was a bit sneaky, and sent me the secret link to the new Boo Seeker album. And oh, yeah. um, I, I listened to it maybe like three or four times. Like it's so different to other stuff that Benny's done in the past. And yeah, like I, I kind of miss albums. Yeah. Like just being you know able what? to listen like, to everything on repeat. I'm stoked yeah. that Flight Facilities is coming out next month. Rufus well, is coming out this month. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, I'm a different kettle of fish because I'm, no one's going to listen to an, an artist that they've never heard of. But in saying that, like yeah, but... my, my, my favourite acts, like, you know, like Sam Fender dropped an album on, on last Friday and I've just been listening to that on repeat because I love him and, and I feel like the album is like a story when you listen to it back to front too. So it's like one mm. big song. That's exactly 
I was just about to say that Fred again, obviously launched his album like maybe a month ago now, but that's a whole story. Like that whole album together is it's, it's a journey. And like maybe Australians aren't really listening to Fred again, but I, for me, like I love Fred again. And I obviously had a few songs saved in my Spotify and then I've listened to the whole album. Honestly, I listen to it every day for probably a good three weeks. So if yeah. you love the music, it's kind of nice to have it all out there on, at once. You know what I mean? I, I agree. Obviously, I think, like, faded, but I think every artist has, you know, thousands of songs. Like I know I, I do. So it's like they're better off being out there than sitting on your computer. I think, you know, mm, 100%. don't overthink it. Just make make a few singles and chuck them out first and then there'll be a couple of diehard mm. fans that will listen to the rest of the album. So I like, yeah. personally, I like having a whole story and, and making it flow in, like songs flow into each other and having a few really weird ones in, in amongst them. And I know Sam Fender yeah. kind of did like a B-side to his record, which was some of his best stuff, I think, um, mm. but not singles. Just stuff that I feel like he needed to get out. Um, and I love that. Um, yeah, and to add to your point, I'm looking forward to Flight Facilities and, and Rufus because they're the, especially Flight Facilities, like seven years. Seven years, but I know. The it's perfection wild, of hey? those boys, and like, I know it's going to be so special. So, like, you just, everything they do is, is like p- perfect and like glossy, and it's like, you know, it's going to be good. So, mm, for sure. Um, how's the sun like shining on me right now? It's like this, the, all the clouds have just like parted. You're glowing, babe. You're glowing. I'm glowing. Um, all right. Well, let's end with a lull. You obviously know the game, Fuck, Marry, Kill. Do you know that game? Oh, yeah, I've never played it like in real life, but I know it. And uh, oh, I've, yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> so your three Fuck, Marry, Kills We've got Palasi, obviously, KX. Yeah. We've got Phil from Crooked Colours. And we've yep. got Jimmy from Flat Facilities. Oh, right. Hit okay. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Well, I'm going to make this easier for myself. I'm going to, because mum might be listening to, I'm, I'm a gentleman, so I don't, I don't, um, I'll marry someone and I'll, and I'll potentially kill someone. So I'll probably kill Palasi. Um, oh, Trike, oh. Pretty, he's pretty quick. But I'll try he's a ninja. I, I, <laughs> if I killed Jimmy or Phil, that'd just be it'd just be like, why you know, like I wouldn't get out of it. But if I killed Palacio, I'd be able to get away with it because I'd just show, show the court some of the messages that he's, he's written me over the years, and, <laughs> and then I would, um, marry, um, for toss of a coin, probably. Probably Jimmy, and I'll leave the rest up to you Jimmy, guys. Jim, Jimmy is, um, I mean, how can you not marry Jimmy? He's just like, he's got oh. so much personality. The guy is like. Yeah, so, so does Phil. I love So Phil. does Palasi though. Jimmy, yeah, Phil, I think, Phil's... yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't kill anyone. But, like, Jimmy's been really helpful with, with this project my solo stuff, oh, and KX, but more so my solo stuff. He's been mm. a bit of a sounding board for me because I know he's so thorough and he's yeah. also very honest. So he's he's hit me between the eyeballs with a few curveballs, and I've wanted to kill him. <laughs> yeah. And I told him that. I told him that, but then I get a better product. So he was a guy that I sent him this single that I was about to release um, this week, and he's like, "It still sounds mm-hmm. like a demo," and I probably wanted to kill him then so i went back to the drawing board and and worked on that for push the push the release date back because of that one bit of feedback Mm. even though there was a lot of people around me saying this is sick but Mm. the the respect i have for someone like jimmy i went back to the drawing board and and um He's like, there's always 10%. And I, I really appreciated him even listening to it and giving me that feedback because I got another 10, I got another 10% out of it and then sent mm. it to him. And then he's like, yeah, this is it. And it was like, I could have married him there. So maybe I married Jimmy as, 
But then again, Phil's been Phil got us on tour with Crooked Colors. He's been so supportive of us as well, and he's a Perth lad. So yeah, um, I'll marry them all, and no one's <laughs> going to argue with me. Okay, sounds good. well. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. It, it makes it a little bit awkward when you see them next to whatever it is. Probably Chris. If Paul, I was playing actually. Squid Squid Games with them all, I'd kill them all and win the money. But <laughs> I'm not. So. Yeah, the whole concept of that Squid Games, it's just so weird to me. But I am going to watch it. I just finished Made. Um, yeah, I made a start, On mate. Netflix. I've heard that's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. Um, a little bit frustrating, I'm not going to lie. There was definitely a few um, episodes in the beginning that really frustrated me with the mum and I, I just I felt like the girl, the main character, wasn't um, looking after herself. But also, like, she, the boyfriend was very abusive. And I also have never been in that uh, that predicament where I haven't felt support from family or been in, in an abusive relationship. So I can't really speak for that. But I got through it all. It's only eight episodes. They're an hour long, uh, well, 45 minutes or something. But it was really good. It was really, really good. Right. We're Reve- revealing yeah. um, Netflix seasons on, on the podcast too. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, many, how many stars are you going to give that out of 10, Beth? Oh, I'd probably give it a four. Oh, actually, out of ten, oh, so I'm four. thinking out of five. I'd probably yeah. give it an out of ten. I'd probably give it a seven. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. I'll watch it. Yeah. I'll, my brother told me to watch it too, so I will. Yeah. Um, give it a red hot crack. It's a girl um, from. All right. Well. Once upon a time in Hollywood, yeah. Isn't it? I think. Uh. Did a little cameo probably. in there. My girlfriend yeah. Samara's in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. Right. I'm oh, sure she was in our film clip. Who, Samara? Was she? Or that girl? <laughs> oh, yeah, she was. Yeah, she was. She was oh, in the was ISO film clip for KX. Yeah, she was. I'll do what you want. Yeah. She was in that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We reached well, out to like um, a while ago. all of our database of contacts for a little ISO film clip for I'll Do What You Want KX style. That was actually really fun. That was good fun. Yeah, that was. It was. Um, all right. Well, thanks, Tom. I can't oh, wait for this song to babe. come out on thanks. Friday. I'm actually pumped for you. Yeah, I'm excited too. And thanks for having me. I, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the, the new music and the new direction because it's yeah, um, it comes from the heart and it's it's been very satisfying and, and rewarding and a few boss moments coming up. Yeah. Maybe. Can't thanks wait. for having me, Bay. I'm sure of it. Anytime. Such a good podcast. I'll see you soon. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you soon. Thanks so much for listening, guys. We will link the artists, Instagram and Spotify in our show notes. Please like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram, TikTok and YouTube to stay up to date with your favorite artists. We'll see you next week, Side Stage.